All right. It's been a big week in politics this week. So joining me to unpack it all is 2GB host Luke Grant and One Nation Chief of Staff James Ashby. Luke and James, welcome to you both to the show. I'd like to begin with Thank the you. Albanese government's new quote, same jobs, same pay laws that are expected to be introduced to Parliament in the coming months. Businesses have raised lots of concerns that they could face large compliance costs if the government doesn't narrow the broadly framed eligibility tests for the laws. James, can you explain these laws and how they're going to impact businesses and employers? Well, I'd love to give you a complete explanation here, but unlike the coalition government of the past, this Labor government do not like advising uh, the crossbench on their bills. Well, certainly not One Nation. They may uh, go and give that privilege to David Pocock and uh, Jackie Lambie, but they certainly have no intention of coming to us and, and giving us an understanding of their bills in detail. So it is heavily reliant on our internal staff and then those outsider industry bodies to come and talk to us and to give you, take away all the fluff and the guff that the Labor Party want to tell you in the media, uh, this, as you would probably realise, Amanda, comes with a hell of a lot of unintended consequences. And that seems to be yeah. quite typical of Labor. The, the, the messaging sounds great, same job, same pay, but there are so many underlying issues with this bill and every single industry seems to have picked up problems with it, and including the public service. I don't think this government realised that this will apply to the public service as well. So people like me who have a public service job working for a senator, I'm a senior advisor, by rights under this new legislation, I will have to be paid, the interpretation is by our lawyers, the same rate as a senior advisor within the Prime Minister's office. So therefore, there will be a consequence to the taxpayer as well as every other business and small business owner across this country. So I think this will just clog up the federal courts once again. It's going to ultimately lead to job losses. That's where I see it, Amanda. I think when people realise the way that this is going to take away the ability of an employer to recognise greater experience in a particular role or um, a long period of loyalty or service and take away the flexibility to be able to incentivise people, it's going to seem pretty unattractive. Luke, now that we've learned that Workplace Relations Minister Tony Burke has excluded the construction lobby from key industrial relations talks and is accusing employers of running a fear campaign, Last night, employer groups released a joint statement that said the Australian business community stands united in its broad opposition to the federal government's proposals to remove flexibility and choice in the workplace, which will threaten jobs and investment and undermine productivity. Now, this can't look good for Tony Burke, surely, Luke. How do you see all this playing out? Um, first off, you're all class. Good on you. I hope everyone heard what you said at the beginning of the show. Secondly, this is almost predictable, isn't it, Amanda? I mean, here we have a Labor government doing deals with the unions. I mean, for goodness sake, the construction sector was closed out or, or let off, if you will, and they've, they've not had Danita warn from master builders attend any of these, any of these briefings. So I, I worry about to what extent this is already a done deal, a stitch-up, a Labor stitch-up. No surprises there. You know, when someone says, oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to save $275 off your your power bill, and we're going to make childcare next to free, blah, blah, blah. They come with a whole lot of other stuff, and particularly the debt that the government owes a union movement in funds and the like. So we, we, should, we shouldn't be too surprised. And back to James' point, you know, we, we all aren't uh, tea pieces in, in, a, in a, you know, a hardware store. We're people. We're different. Different experience, different values, different qualities, different levels of creativity, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just a Labor union deal. No surprises there. Yeah, it's pretty shocking when they just lock out of the room everybody who might disagree with them. I'm really shocked by what you said to James, that the crossbench are being excluded from briefings and not brought on the journey. There's an arrogance in that that's shocking. Um, let's move to Martin Place, where the heat is ratcheting up on Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe. New figures reported by the Courier-Mail show that a person with a $500,000 mortgage 
and earning $80,000 a year before the RBA started hiking rates will now feel like they are making less than $62,000 next financial year. It's the equivalent of a 22% pay cut. But meanwhile, strong jobs growth data released yesterday has made the chance of a July rate rise even more likely. James, people are really hurting at the moment. How's this going to play out? Well, they sure are. And to put that in simple terms, it's over $380 a week. People are worse off because of these consistent rate rises. And the fear is, as you know, Amanda, uh, because of large government spending that's been inspired by this Albanese government and the handouts left, right and centre, uh, we're going to see at least another two rate rises between now and Christmas, which only puts us in a more vulnerable position. So this is bad news for Australians, particularly those with a mortgage or those even who rent. So it's scary times ahead. It's not going to get any easier. And the, the rhetoric was out there before this election. It will not be easy under Albanese. Isn't that just coming to, uh, to truth? Yeah, well, Luke, Governor Philip Lowe is on a generous $1 million salary. The cost of renovating the Reserve Bank's yep. headquarters at Martin Place is now going to cost taxpayers almost half a billion dollars. And after hiking rates in May, the Reserve Bank spent $25,000 on an exclusive dinner for Perth's business elites. This just doesn't seem to fit with what we understand is a fair go in this country, does it? No, I'm with you, Amanda. Look... It's, it's really easy to tee off in, uh, on Philip Lowe. I, I've listened carefully to his statements. Uh, you know, he denies that he guaranteed that rates wouldn't move till 2024 and all that kind of stuff. But, look, it's, it's, the damage has been done. The dinner in Perth, goodness gracious me, did they not realise what they just did? They just put up the interest rates of all those people, a third of Australians, who are paying a mortgage. It was like they were celebrating. Yay, we got them again. I mean, I, I don't know, and it's much more important than spin and media, I know, but I, I think we're entitled to see that the, you know, the people that control how much money we've got left in our pockets at least get it, that it's a bit tough, and it is tough. I hear from listeners every day of the week just how hard it is, uh, and, and to see them celebrating like that in Perth, wow, that was a step too far. I know he's an easy target, Philip Lowe, maybe he should be, but come on. Get with the program. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Philip Lowe's had a bit of a tough trot because he's been left holding the bag for yeah. Labor's failure to act yeah. on inflation. But it is yeah. tone deaf to be living the high life while regular Australians are feeling more yes. pain than they have in decades. Um, let's move to migration, yeah. which, in my opinion, is out of whack with the needs of existing Australians. New figures show that Australia is adding 1,361 people every single day. Through 2022, our population swelled by a record 497,000 people. Meanwhile, opposition leader Peter Dutton has warned that mass migration is making life harder for working people who are flat out finding a rental property or breaking into buying in the property market. James, you've been talking about this for years. How can the Albanese government take in record numbers of migrants when our major cities face a full-blown housing crisis? Well, Pauline Hanson's been talking about this for over 30 years and it has all come to fruition. And I'm not going to let you off lightly, Amanda. You were part of that government back in 22 that also hey. was part of the problem. So it is, it's a coalition Labor issue. It, you know, you both are responsible for the issue that we have here of just mass oh. migration. The numbers are very The Labor and Liberal James. Party have... Don't... You're not going to get away with it, Amanda. I'm sorry you're going to have to wear are, this. It's egg on everybody's different. face. From Labor and Liberal... The numbers no, are yeah. very different. I'm sorry, I'm not going to let you off lightly here. You've got to wear it. They've just and exploded the problem is, though, since the Labor had changed. an opportunity... A Labor had an opportunity to <laughs> peel this back, and they haven't. In fact, they've only said they're going to increase it over time. And I'm sorry, the Australian people are sick to death of this. So it's all well and good for Peter Dutton and yourself and others within the Liberal Party to now whinge about it, but you're part of the problem. So own up to it and realise now as Australians, we've got to say enough's enough. Let's look after the people that we've got here now. I know the Greens are banging on about building 30,000 homes for low socioeconomic people in this country. It's never going to be enough.
At the rate we're going, we're allowing too many people into this country and we are just failing. I'll agree with you on the rate we're currently going, but there is a happy medium, I think, between bringing people who want to be in this country and contributing to it in, in balance with the infrastructure that's needed for our community. Luke, how can Australia keep bringing in so many migrants year after year? Is it, is it being done to artificially boost economic growth, to increase the number of taxpayers? Is it to keep wages down? What's the motive here and when will enough be enough? Um, wow, James, how many angry pills today, my friend? Whoa! Um, I tell you what they've done. They, it's been a long week, it's, Luke. It's just it's it's out it's uh, it's it's out of control. Look, I can see that the Morrison government certainly brought lots of people in, but we're talking about a record here. We're talking about I think it's a ten year high here, and it's ridiculous in the middle of a certainly a rental crisis. Are they bringing it in to get a better economic outlook? Uh, you know, more spenders, as you say, more taxpayers. Quite likely. Are they doing to reduce wages? No, because, you know, they want to be the champion of increasing wages, and that's a problem, because the more workers you've got here, the more workers that are available, so that's got a, you know, a, a down pressure on wages, so that doesn't make sense. I, I, I think it, someone's believed the skill shortage thing. I, I ask about it all the time, Amanda. What, what skill and how many? And the minute you ask that, oh, 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 everyone and lots, you know, there's no specific answer. So it's out of control. It's stupid. It affects decent, hardworking taxpayers. People that are renting are copping it in the neck. And it's just bloody wrong. And there's a small cohort of Australians that we don't want to talk about who simply refuse to work too. James, finally, let me take this yeah. one to you. Yesterday, opposition leader yep. in Queensland, David Crisofulli, outlined his vision for the Sunshine State in an hour-long budget reply speech. He said an LNP state government would release real-time health data, waive the cost of replacement of driver's licences for victims of crime and redirect the housing fund to focus on new homes. He also said he wants to rebuild trust in government and redirect money from the big four consulting firms and empower the public service to do its job like never before. James, what's your take on this vision for Queensland? Well, David Crisofulli is going to need like-minded, conservative minor parties to help him get to government if he wants to be the Premier of Queensland. Uh, look, I, I know it's early days. I know his response is uh, it's, it's sound. He's got a long way to go. But the one thing I'd say to the LNP, it cannot be just David Crisofulli doing all the hard work. I don't see the Liberal National Party yeah. hungry enough in this state to want government. You want government, David? Get the rest of your people on the same hard-working level as you. Otherwise, you ain't going to win, mate. It's absolutely true that a win takes a united team working bloody hard. Luke and James, thank you very much for your time tonight. I very much appreciate it.